Okay, part two of me trying to explain how to make a shot like this in, in free open source software Blender, and uh, today is green screening. Here we go. So I'll have a proper tutorial on how to key green screens in Blender at the end here, because look, okay, in the compositor, just stick a key node between the movie clip and the composite and click on the green, oh, and convert pre-multiply to make it actually look good. And uh, if it doesn't, you probably didn't like your green screen good, but I wanna start with the fun stuff because there's a bazillion green screen tutorials already out there. So how to place pre-keyed people in your scene. So hit F3, type in import images as planes, find your footage, select emission, and, and there you go. If you don't have images as planes already activated, open the preferences, activate it in the add-ons tab, and then maybe save preferences to keep it on by default so I don't have to say this every time. Now you can line up the feet and yeah, yeah I've, I've gotten a haircut since then. But you have natural shadows, reflections, occlusions, you can, you can even animate the camera a little bit until the subject walks away from the camera and then things get weird. Nothing lines up anymore, and that makes sense, because as far as the footage is concerned, as they go into the distance, they're just rising up and shrinking, and animating the camera blows the whole illusion. So uh, you can just have your person stay stationary, and it can be as simple as that. Or you could set up two reference empties and try to animate the footage so it cancels out the person's motion, parent it to an empty and try to match up the person's original motion, but that's annoying and not good, and don't do that. Instead, I, I recently did a motion tracking tutorial. Uh, link, links below, so let's build off of that. First off, if you track footage, apply that motion to a camera, then parent that footage to the front of the camera, it stabilizes the footage, because the footage motion cancels out the camera motion, because, I mean, if you think about it, of, of course it would. In fact, okay, so this is a tangent, but remember the point cloud we got from the motion tracking tutorial? Model some geometry based on that, so it just intersects the reference points. Now it'll line up with the footage, but this is still just a camera overlay. Wouldn't it be cool to actually stick that footage to the geometry? Give the object a new material, give it an emissive surface, and make the base color an image texture. Just load in your footage. Set the vector to window, that'll make it fill the camera view. Oh, and don't forget to give it enough frames and turn on auto refresh. Now it projects right onto the geometry as, as long as you're in the camera view. It always projects from wherever you are, that's kind of weird. We want it to stick. So, just use a UV project modifier, using a UV map and the camera. Now if you go back to materials and use UV instead of window, it'll project the footage from the coordinates of the camera. Although, you might have to change the modifier scale to match your footage a little bit. And subdivide the object. But now it's stuck to the geometry. Even if your footage was handheld, now it's normalized. You can add a second camera and animate some new camera movement. Uh, obviously works best if you stay close to the position of the original camera, but this can be super useful technique. You can digitally extend out your tiny practical set, put in a big crane move that'd be impossible to film in your garage. This is, this is one of my favorite things because it really lets you rework almost every aspect of a shot in post. It makes compositing easier too, because you're not just dealing with 2D layers of 3D life, it's actually there in 3D space, which is a lot easier easier for, for my brain to wrap around. Oh, and since it's an emissive texture, radiating light, if you have an object in there, the texture will actually light the object with directional accuracy, within reason. What it also means is if you shot your footage handheld, you track it and mount the footage to the front of the camera, your person will be stationary. You still have the same issue as before though. If they walk away, they'll shrink up into the air. So here's what we do. Select the footage, then shift click on the camera. Hit control P to parent the footage to the camera, then control C. Copy both the location and the rotation. You might, you might have to activate the copy attributes add-on if you haven't already. It's a very good add-on. Now tab in edit mode, hit G, Z, Z to slide the plane out along its local Z axis. Go into the camera view and scale it to fit the frame perfectly. Now, since the origin is on the camera, when you scale the footage, it gets bigger and further away in a way that perfectly cancels itself out from the camera's point of view. Cool, huh? So what do we do with this? Well, scale it up and down so the front of the foot is just almost clipping into the ground. Turn on auto keyframing, go a few frames later, and, uh, and scale it again. Do the whole shot. This process goes pretty quick. If you can't see their feet, give it your best guess. It's, it's really forgiving. And because of trigonometry or something like that, the scaling is actually normalized, and you have your person walking around the way they actually were on set. In fact, look at this. This is from the Dynamo Dream Teaser, and because of this process, you can see the footage not only automatically scales to cancel out her size difference as she walks away, it also correctly places her in the right place in the scene. Crazy, just from lining up the feet. Once you start 3D tracking, everything just clicks into place. That's a lie, a lot of things don't, but this, this thing did. So, so let's start laying out the environment. I'm gonna start with some walkways, intersecting those tracking markers everywhere she goes. Maybe, maybe blocking some future buildings. This is keying, not modeling, so we're gonna go fast and loose. And uh, let's cheat a little. So at one point, Caitlin stops and backs up a few steps. In the digital environment, I have this happen right after she walks behind a wall. And I can just add a couple keyframes to the camera to make it continue moving forwards as she walks backwards. When she pops back out, we can use that same bit of green screen again so we have it feel like she's exploring a larger space. It's it's cheap, but it's fun. Or, oh, okay. At one point, I have her kind of rotating in place on her heel. I'm going to add an empty right under her feet, parent the camera to it, and... Uh, 
Okay, so constraints can get funky. So I'm going to convert it to an F curve here. Now it's actual animation data instead of a constraint. And now it lets you parent the camera to the empty. And keyframe it at the start of her turn, rotate the camera, add another to the end. And now it looks like she's staying still, but the camera's moving. Just, just a fun trick. If you want, we could parent that empty to a platform and now she's on an elevator. <laughs> This is also a great time to start matching up the lighting. You can see she passes a light source here, so I'm gonna add a digital light to the scene to help integrate her a bit. If you figure this out ahead of time, you can have digital objects casting actual light on your actors. Eevee also makes it really easy to match lighting color and intensity. Random tip, if you're setting up lights and stuff in Eevee and notice your footage is casting big shadows, go in the material settings and change shadow to alpha hashed, and it works a lot better now. So a very exciting thing is that this process gives you a ton of freedom to tweak the camera if you want. I like shooting a bit wide so I can more easily line up the actor's feet with the floor and then zooming in a bit with the virtual camera or add a whole new camera flying around while the original is still doing its thing. Obviously you have to stay in front of the footage or you can tell it's 2D, but uh, it's more forgiving than I expected. What I usually end up doing is just parenting a new camera to the tracked camera, so I get all the existing camera movement, but I can also still look around and tweak the camera however I like. Well, okay, Ian. You say with the voice of an old man who's seen more than we can ever dream, how do you get this green screened element? Super easily. Open a compositing workspace, reusing nodes, add a movie clip and load in your footage. Ignore the render layers. We're gonna connect straight to the composite. The composite node's the final node. It's what'll be saved when we hit render. If you control shift click on a node, it pops up a viewer node that shows us what we're doing. V and alt V zoom in and out and the alt plus scroll wheel lets you pan. It's not very intuitive, but you get used to it. Under mat, add a keying node and slide it on in there. You'll have to update the viewing node to see what you're doing in it. And this is the big green screen bit. Select some mid to darker green. Now just slide up the clip black to get rid of the stuff you want to get rid of and slide down clip white to preserve stuff you want to keep. Ideally, you want to keep these numbers as close to default as possible. Doesn't look good? Let's add some sauce, add an alpha convert node. Hey, hey. Sometimes that's all you need, but often you'll have to tighten things up by eroding the mat a couple of pixels to get rid of like that fringe. And this is usually enough for me, but you can tweak all the other stuff. Screen balance and despill balance can be great to tweak, and uh, a negative feather distance can sometimes help if you have a really messy key. Just try not to overdo it. I don't know what kernels do, but if you slide something in a direction and it looks better, do it. But okay, but what about all this stuff around the borders? We, we have to mask it out, which is also easy. Open a new masking workspace, uh, load in your footage, and control click to add a mask. Circle your subject and click toggle cyclic to close it. You've just created a mask with control handles, and you can move them just like anything else in Blender. Hit A to select them all, or B to box select, G to grab, R to rotate, S to scale, all that good stuff. Hit I to add a keyframe, then go a few frames later, move the mask, and hit I to add another. Keep going, surrounding your actor. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're just trying to isolate the actor from all that other garbage. Hit Alt S and you can control the feathering if you want. Under mask display, you can turn on overlay to see what it'll look like. If you want to add another mask, be sure you add it to a new mask layer. You can even make them negative. Oh yeah, also, okay. If you hit tab, you're in the tracker. What? Can you just control click on a distinctive point, track it, tab back to masking, select points you want to attach and hit control P to pair them to the tracker? Y yes. Try to do that in After Effects. No, I, oh, no, I know you can. It's just slightly easier here. I didn't mean to, please. Now jump back into the compositor and add a mask node using our mask and drag it into the garbage mat input. If it appears off, make sure your project resolution matches that of the footage. This is important. Also, they assume you're rotoring out the garbage instead of what you want to keep. So use an invert node to flip it all around and there we go, looks gorgeous. Now we export it. The trick is picking the right format. Since we're pre-keying this, we need a format with an alpha channel included. That's, that's transparency data. I'm not an expert, but I did try every combination I could think of, and uh, uncompressed TIFFs gave me the best frames per second. What I recommend is using two versions, one full res and another at like one third resolution so your viewport doesn't get bogged down. When it's time to do the final render, just replace the textures with the full res version and then it's all good. Oh, and I should have mentioned this earlier, but if you're importing an image sequence, just select all the images and make sure animate image sequence is checked. There you go. So I, I hope this is useful. There's a ton of other stuff that could be said about lighting, green screens and all that, but mostly it comes down to making sure you have enough light and the screen is lit as flat and evenly as possible. Nah. I'm just always really excited about the possibilities of, of technology like this and what it can do for like indie filmmakers. Huge, huge thanks to the folks over on the Patreon. Lots going on over there, lots of tutorials. I've got a, a video going through the entire making of this shot and lots of assets you can use. Rigged photo scan dudes, plants, rocks, burger, textures like waterfalls, steam, fire, rain, all that, it's been, we've been nuts. It's been really good. Um, so uh, yeah, thanks for watching.